Piranha Plant Cove is a race course for Mario Kart Tour. This scenic course is situated on an archipelago adorned with underwater ruins, and is so meticulously designed with a captivating Piranha Plant motif. The underwater ruins have an uncanny resemblance to the legendary underwater city of Atlantis, just making Piranha Plant Cove a visual delight for racers. G'day folks, my name is Swiftjar, and I'm delighted to welcome you back to the analysis and comparison series. This series is where we explore the history of a track from the Mario Kart series and analyze all the changes it has experienced over the years. As you can probably already tell, we're gonna be exploring Piranha Plant Cove today. And I'm thrilled to be joined by a very special guest who is a massive Piranha Plant Co fan, being Sean Ray. To best navigate the video, you can utilize the timestamps down below. And to ensure you don't miss the other track analysis videos for Wave 6, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Simply by doing so, you'll even be part of the giveaway, which you can find more about down in the pinned comment below. All right. Let's get cracking on into it. Piranha Plant Co. made its debut in Mario Kart Tour's 2023 Exploration Tour. At this point in time, it has never been remade. But that is set to change this week when it releases in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe come November the 9th. As mentioned, this track is situated on an archipelago adorned with underwater ruins. Throughout the race, you'll come across familiar adversaries from the Mario universe. This includes thwomps, mores, clampies, cheap cheeps, jelly beans, and even bulbers. These serve as both course obstacles and even background elements. What I love about this course is that it isn't entirely underwater. You will occasionally pop up to the surface, which emits a real pirate to the Caribbean vibe. What makes Piranha Plant Cove extremely unique is that it is the only non-city tour nitro track to feature several different variants. It specifically contains three, being Piranha Plant Cove 1, Piranha Plant Cove 2, and, you guessed it, Piranha Plant Cove 3. To help go over all the unique variants, I've invited Sean Ray, who is a Super Co fan. Thank you, Swiftjar, for allowing me to take you guys on a tour of Piranha Plant Cove, talking about the three variants that you're going to deal with. Starting off with Cove 1, you'll start underwater which is similar to Dolphin Shoals. Throughout the race, pillars at the start will fall down over time when you're about to enter lap 2 in tour. Drivers soon have to race up on a large staircase, which is decorated with PD Piranha heads all around, which is awesome to see. Once you reach to the top of the stairs, you'll race on top of the surface of the ruins. After you race your way through the atmospheric ruins, there is an option when you try beneath the stone arcs or try on top of them. Once you are done racing through the surface of the ruins, you'll try back down to the underwater segment, bringing you some dash panels and thwart to stop you in your way. After a few turns later after the thwomp section, you'll end the lap of Cove 1. Cove 2 is where things get a bit interesting. You'll start off on the edge of the island, overlooking the ruins when you're about to glide through at the start. What a few that is. After the gliding section, you'll go underwater to see some jelly beans and clampies. Once you're about to go to the area that you start off with Cove 1, there is geysers that also go on top of the Unagi, which is the huge ill that you can trick off of. While going up the stairs again, racers will keep going straight until going underwater while going right until we go up onto the island with a bit of split gate action around the small pier. You'll then have to race some bendy turns while trying to avoid the munching piranha plant on your far left in order to finish past Cove 2. Lastly, we're on Cove 3. You'll start off exactly like you did in Cove 1, but instead you'll take a sharp left turn while racing along with fish bones in your way. Racing through the crystal cave with glowy rocks and curls that will make Superman on his knees. After the cave, there is a pond wreckage of ships that you go around. Or, if you have a mushroom, you can take a shortcut around that ship area. There is quite a bit of geyser action that you will race around the straight array curves along with more clamp base on your ray. Following up on the left turn, you will try under Cove 2, a sunken ruin that grants up sculptures of PD Piranha all around and bull borbs to lighten up the area a bit. What is also around is a giant Unagi, so please be aware of that. While racing underground, there is some stones that are implanted on the ground to follow up some trick action as you go by. But that section is a bit short as you can take that final turn to the right and finish 
Cove 3. With that out of the way, let me pass the mic to Swift Char with the changes in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Thanks for that, Sean. I seriously love your passion behind this. As mentioned, Piranha Plant Cove will return in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as part of the sixth and final wave of the DLC. It will appear as the fourth and final course of the Acorn Cup. Much like the city courses in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, this version of the track combines the three distinct routes from Tour into a single course. This distinguishes itself as the only non-city track from Tour to receive such treatment. In this version, all three routes remain largely unchanged, with very minimal alterations to their layouts. What stands out prominently is the absence of the starting line from Piranha Plant Cove 2. This track has definitely undergone some notable visual enhancements, especially in comparison to the original appearance. Most notably though, the underwater sections are considerably brighter than in Tour. The logo on the course's starting line banner also now sports a beige hue instead of a purple one. Fun the 8 from the Swift Cafe Discord pointed out a new addition to the shipwreck. That of course is being a cute little clampy. Kello also pointed out that the sizes of the dash panels have now also been adjusted in certain areas. Then Drobim also added they have now put spectators in the course, such as Toad swimming in the underwater ruins, and then most notable in the Pierre section. Be sure you're in the Swift Cafe Discord, where you can chat with Mario and Mario Kart fans 24-7, play some online with me in voice chat, and even have the opportunity to feature in a future Swift Jar video. You can find your invitation along with my Twitter handle down in the pinned comment below. I'm a really big fan of all the new textures and the lighting system in this course. I also really love the new small added details around objects. It just makes it feel so much more alive and just looks so much better. An example of what I mean by this is the extra added metal part when using the glide ramp from the original Piranha Plant Co. 2 stuff. Or, as my friend Matthew from Game Explain pointed out during their video, some arrows from Tour have been replaced by one big arrow sign. This looks so much more better. Speaking of looking better, how good does the moon look in this version? And with that, these are all the changes that I was able to spot in Piranha Plant Co. Be sure to let me know down in the comments how keen you are to race on this track, and of course, if I did manage to miss any changes. A massive shout out goes to Sean Ray who helped out with this video. Sean makes some really good Mario Kart content and also streams a lot over on Twitch as well, so be sure to check him out. Another shout out also goes to Rider Kart DX who helped out with the thumbnail designs. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be much appreciated if you could leave a like and subscribe. Thanks. It honestly helps out the channel a lot. Finally, a massive shout out goes to all of our members. You are all absolute legends and you inspire me to always make the best possible content that I'm capable of. Until next time, take care and goodbye.